Hey guys, Rich here. So this is where we left off from part one. Um, just as a quick review in part one, we disassembled everything necessary on the tractor to get the injection pump out, removed one of the factory shims, and then reinstalled everything, got it all back together. And this is right after I started it for the first time after all that work. Um, if you didn't watch part one, I strongly suggest you go back and do that. I talk a lot about uh, kind of the, the theory in diesel engines, uh, you know, how they make power and what the differences are between the D1703 direct injection and the L2501 and some older variants of the D1703 that are also direct injection. So again, if you haven't seen that, I strongly suggest you go back and watch it. If you're here to see part two, well, welcome back. Let's get back to it. So I went out and I tested it and it definitely has more power. It is not a, oh my God, it's a beast now difference. Um, I think I saw a difference of about 200 RPMs under similar load coming up my driveway. Um, and it's, it just feels more responsive as well. Probably the biggest difference is, and I didn't run it long enough, I guess, to really be sure. But one of the complaints that I've had with this machine and other folks have had as well is, the exhaust just always seems kind of smoky. There always seems to be a lot of particulate. And I've run this machine all day doing grading. And after the day, uh, or I should say even after using the machine for three, four hours continuously of, of seat time, um, I'll start to get a sore throat uh, just from the, the particulate matter in the exhaust. And the exhaust looks completely clean to me now. I don't think there is, I think what was going on is with the injection timing the way it was, the fuel was just getting injected a little bit too late and it, the motor's not having an opportunity to burn it efficiently. Now, I think that's on purpose by Kubota. I think that probably does reduce the, the, the nitrous oxides in the exhaust. So it probably helps from an emissions perspective, but it increases the particulates by quite a bit. Um, you know, and also just given the fact that there was only two shims in here, I'm betting that the machines that people are complaining are smokier than others are probably, uh, you know, at this as far retarded as can be within that acceptable range. Because with the shim choices that Kubota gives you, it's impossible, uh, you know, to really hit the upper end of that spec um, from the factory. I think that's why the spec is actually as wide as it is, because they know with the uh, the limited options in shims, uh, you know, they're lucky to just land inside that that spec from the factory. So um, one thing I'm thinking about now is, and I haven't decided if I'm going to mess with it or not, I believe under this cover here is the, the limiting screw for the, the fuel rack in the injection pump. Um, if I pull this cover off, I believe I can increase the maximum amount of fuel that the pump will deliver at any RPM. Um, I think I might give it a shot because the exhaust is just completely clear now. Even when this thing bogs a little bit under power, there's no, there's no black smoke. So it's telling me actually that uh, with the timing where it's set now from, for the, the injection pump, we could probably do with a little bit more fuel and that might make a more significant difference in the power delivery as well. So I'll bring you back and let you know uh, what I do here. Also, just from a leak perspective with everything, the only thing I noticed is the only place it looks like I might be leaking a little bit is right there. It's a little wet uh, underneath that uh, flare nut. Um, it's not dripping anywhere, so I think I might be oozing just a little bit from there. I don't see it wet anywhere else. So that's great if that's true, uh, that that's the only place I'm a little bit loose on because that's one of the easiest ones to, to tighten up. Oh, I'm not proud of this, but uh, I've been trying to remove this thing for probably going on 40 minutes. <laughs> Uh, it's actually a much thicker steel than I thought. It's a newer design than the caps that I've seen in other videos online. 
I uh, just I've just taken the dremeling most of the way through it. I'm gonna see if I can get it off because at this point I've uh, I'm kind of at a point of no return in messing with it. I actually loosened up that bolt, um, so I couldn't even uh, the bolt underneath the the set bolt. So I can't even run the tractor um, until I'm able to get this off and uh, and get the bolt adjusted now. Okay, so after the last shot there, you saw I had dremeled it down pretty thin, and what I was able to do, I got it thin enough that I was able to split it with a screwdriver. So, and you can see, I just wanted to show you before I try and get any more off, it looks like there's a part of it there that either has like a, uh, um, a ridge or even like maybe a washer uh, crimped inside of this that seems to be spinning between uh, two of the nuts in there. So that's why this thing was so hard to get off. And this is thick. Metal, you can see there, me cutting through with the drum. I cut through at a bit of an angle, but still, um, this is a much newer design than the simple crimp on ones that I've seen in other videos. This was a bear uh, to get off, and I'm still not completely off yet. Okay, so I've gotten this off, and now having it off, I don't think there's any way I would have gotten this off of here uh, without um, without drumming it. Uh, they've definitely updated the design. This appears to be, I thought this was two pieces. This appears to be one piece with a shoulder on there. Uh, and then this, uh, this washer inside of here that is, the washer I believe uh, is actually pressed into uh, that cap that I removed. Um, so the way this works is, and now this is similar to other videos I've seen at this point, but the way that this works is this whole thing turns. You can put an Allen key in the end, turn this whole thing, and then this essentially locks it down on the motor. So this entire, the whole threaded piece inside spins. This locks it down in place. Um, and then the cap seals up against there. Uh, I sprayed, uh, I had a bunch of metal shavings or metal dust, I guess, there uh, at the end from dremeling it. Um, I rinsed that with some kerosene. I'm going to rinse it even some more just to make sure I don't have any filings there. Thing is, because of how difficult this was to get off, I actually don't know where this was set now. Um, so I'm going to be, I guess, messing with it to find the optimal fuel setting. Of course, the workshop manual does not cover this because they don't want you messing with it. So, yeah, fun times. Here's a closer look at that part. Um, it has weight to it. This is not a thin... Uh, part formed from sheet metal. It looks like it's probably uh, maybe cast. And there is a split line along the bottom, uh, but not all the way. And you see there is a area there where that washer sits inside of. My guess is that this is probably cast with that split line in it maybe and then it's crimped on. I mean, it is definitely, it's, it's not intended to ever remove. Even seeing it now in my hand and looking at the other part, I don't see any way that this could have been removed short of cutting it off. When you look at this from on the tractor, it really genuinely looks like just a piece of thin sheet metal with just a cover that maybe is a little snug and somebody taps it on with a mallet. That is not the case. This is a substantial piece of metal that is cast and has and that's not a, a, a lip or like a like a flange or something on the end that's the thickness of this part oh man now we're getting somewhere so I uh, I did just sort of an initial setting kind of close to where I thought it was test drove it actually had less power so it was clear that uh, you know, my initial setting was less fuel than uh, what it was before I loosened that bolt up. Uh, just came out half a turn and uh, wow, yeah, actually it's half turns, I'm sorry, one turn's definitely uh, too far from wherever I was. And I remember, I don't know what my stock setting was because uh, I loosened up that bolt taking the cover off. Uh, but uh, well, how do I know it's too much? Well, at idle, I don't have any smoke. Um, when I give it a burst of throttle, uh, it smokes a little bit. Just get a burst of smoke. But under load, it's definitely smoking. Not a lot. Uh, but I don't think it really should be smoking 
uh, at all under load or certainly not visibly and I can I can definitely see it it's not it's not quote unquote rolling coal and I have no desire to do that um, I just want you know the power maximized out of this thing within safe limits so I'm gonna uh, probably go back in maybe a quarter turn and then test it again all right this thing is a beast now um, huge difference in power uh, I think you know so retiming the the injection pump helped a little bit but the reality is after that timing adjustment, um, I didn't have any more fuel, so uh, it just wasn't really doing anything. Uh, this thing is, I mean, I don't have a dyno. It feels uh, like probably at least 25% more power, potentially even more. Uh, I gotta go spend some time now kind of just reading on uh, performance tuning and seeing where I should be set at. So I've, I have brought I ended up bringing it back in about a half a turn from where I started, um, which is, which probably represents somewhere around half a turn out from stock, but I'm guessing because again, I don't know my stock position due to that bolt loosening up uh, while I was trying to get the cover off. And I don't see any smoke at idle. I don't see any smoke when it's maintaining full RPMs, when it's bogging, I'm getting smoke, but not a lot. And I think that's where I want to be, but I don't know. And I certainly don't want to do any damage to the engine. Um, I just did some limited testing. I'm going to go do some reading and see what I can see what I can find out. But uh, very very happy with the performance right now. Uh, this thing. So the the test I'm repeating, and uh, I will. Uh, I will close this video out with a, a video of me coming back up the driveway just like I did in the beginning. Um, I was bogging down to about uh, 16, 15, 15 to 1600 RPMs under full throttle and high gear, so a lot of bog. Um, after adjusting the injection pump, it was only bogging down to about 1800 RPMs, same exact test. Uh, now with this fuel adjustment, uh, it's bogging down to about maybe 2200 rpm so big difference and you know before it really felt like you were just completely out of power now it's it is bogging down by 300 rpms but uh you don't you don't really notice it it's still it just it feels quite powerful so do some research again i certainly want to make sure i'm not doing any damage here um i'm gonna you know do some reading and see if i can figure out what the adjustment on this really should be over the course of the last couple of days, I've been pretty busy with work, but uh, when I have time, I've been coming out and messing with this. I've got it all put back together because at this point, the only adjustment that I'm making is to the uh, that, that screw underneath the cover that I removed. Um, I think I've got it adjusted where it should be. Um, I've taken it on a couple of test drives. There's very, very minimal smoke, but still far more power than I had before I uh, took the shim out from underneath the pump or messed with that. It's really a shame I lost the stock setting because I have no idea how further out from stock uh, or how further how far further out than stock I am. I just I have, I have no way of knowing. Um, and I was about to kind of put this back together and call it a, a go. Um, I have a, a hill, real steep hill, uh, right near my house here that takes about uh, probably about three to five minutes to go up with the tractor so it gives it a really hard workout so i was going in high gear and just keeping my foot on the uh the hst pedal to where i was pulling the rpms down two to three hundred from uh what i had the throttle set to so giving it again like a real hard workout bogging it um, you don't generally want to bog a diesel like that uh, because that's when that's when you're going to see the highest temps uh, especially if you bog it even more um, it's really going to heat up and you're going to get reduced power output. You're, you're far better just letting it pull down a couple of hundred RPMs tops. Anyway, I was on purpose dragging it down to get the heat up as high as I could. And what I was doing was on this side. So we have the find a place to put the light here so I can point. That kind of works. So this is the exhaust manifold. Um, it's a little hard to see, but the uh, the third cylinder is back there. Um, and then these two come over here and join. And yeah, this thing's kind of in the way here, but 
So it comes up, makes a bend, and then goes up into the muffler. So I was measuring with an infrared thermometer right here. Uh, now the thing is, I really don't know how accurate that is. I was kind of assuming that the actual exhaust gas could be maybe 100 degrees warmer. Um, maybe it's pretty much the same as the surface temperature of this, or maybe it's way hotter. And that's when I started to get a bit nervous and realized I probably ought to measure that. So I looked into, uh, uh, you know, like a pyrometer, uh, which you typically, you know, get put in like a diesel pickup truck. Uh, I've seen some folks use them on tractors as well. They're like $175. And yeah, not that, you know, the peace of mind of this engine is not worth that uh, to me. Uh, it's, some, it's not something I'm going to leave hooked up, so it just seemed like a lot of money to spend. But uh, these EGT or the exhaust gas, uh, uh, you know, probes, uh, they make them in a standard K-type, which you can read with any type of reader that'll take a K-type probe. So let me walk you over here. I ordered, and it just came in today. just an EGT probe, and this is only like 20 bucks, amazingly. Um, and I already had a K-type probe reader. So I had, I had two plugged in here just to make sure that these readings seemed, seemed good on the probe I just bought. Let's turn this on. So probe two is a known good probe um, that I already have. And probe one is the EGT probe. Oops, <laughs> wrong switch. That was Fahrenheit to Celsius. Uh, so we switched to, from TC2 to TC1. And look at that, we're right on. No difference at all uh, between the probes. So uh, now that doesn't speak to the accuracy of this, you know, up, up to and over a thousand degrees, but um, at least I know I'm getting a logical reading from this. I'm not just blindly testing it. So, that section of pipe that I just showed you here, let's unplug this. Do this with one hand? No, gotta set you down. Okay, back at the tractor, and I know it's hard to see with this thing here, but so this comes down and makes a bend over to the exhaust manifold. So this riser pipe here is actually part of the muffler. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill that. This is uh, eighth inch um, NPT, uh, National Pipe Thread. So if you see that, you see the threads get larger as it goes up so that it tightens up in the hole and you don't need to use any type of sealant on it for this type of application. It just uh, tightens up on its own. Um, a lot of guys will put this in their manifold. Really fortunate on the L2501, the way the muffler works, I don't see any reason why we can't put it right in that sort of up pipe to the muffler. That is super convenient because we can just unbolt this whole muffler See, it comes up over here, big muffler, and then comes down over here. That's essentially the exhaust pipe. So I believe we can just take these four bolts out, lift this whole thing off, and then I can drill this and tap it off the tractor and then reinstall it. My thought is, and the lighting's not great here, but so the alternator's here, pipe up is here. There is nothing in this space here behind here. I know you can't see back there, but there's nothing there. So my thought is if we drill the hole back here facing the front of the tractor, uh, that'll go into the pipe. This will point straight down into that void between the alternator and the pipe. And the wire will conveniently come down to where there's already a bundle of wires. And then I can run this guy, this is the, uh, the K-type connector, uh, back underneath the dash here. And I can plug it into that probe while I'm running the tractor right now to test it give it a real heavy load, but I can also coil it up and just keep it up under there. So if in the future I notice any changes with the way things are running, or if I'm gonna be another scenario where I'm really gonna be heavily loading this tractor for, you know, several minutes at a time, like absolute full load, um, if I want to, I could plug in and, you know, just get a look and see where we're at. To be honest, I'm probably never gonna plug this guy in again. This is sort of a, I am gonna, you know, almost abuse this tractor going up this hill. Uh, it's about, this hill's probably about a mile and a half long, at least a mile, and it's steep. Um, because that's probably the heaviest load that this tractor is ever going to see. That and snow blowing. And I might hook this up. The, if we get a really big snow this year, I might hook this back up 
just to see where uh, the exhaust temperature is. Anyway, I know there's a lot of talking, but uh, I think it's important I talked about that because I found in my reading and understanding how all this stuff works, I found so much misinformation. Uh, don't go out there and read one source of information and think that you've got it. I came across countless threads, comments from people where they were saying, oh, just turn the fuel up. You'll be fine. Uh, if you have too much fuel, it's just going to make it run cooler anyway. Absolute lies. That's true in a gas engine, not true in a diesel. A diesel engine, you're never controlling the amount of air coming into it. At least a simple mechanical diesel like these Kubotas. Um, uh, maybe the newer ones might have some additional controls on them, uh, the ones that have all of the emission stuff, but a, a simple mechanical engine like this one, uh, you always have full amount of air coming into the engine. It's just a question of how much diesel you're injecting into the cylinder to burn. The more diesel you put in there, the faster the engine runs, the more power it produces. Uh, it's the governor. When you, when you adjust the throttle, you're really just telling the governor uh, to give it essentially uh, more fuel up to a certain point. Um, it's never going to go truly wide open throttle, just increasing the, the throttle. Uh, for it to be quote unquote, quote unquote, wide open throttle would be your throttle all the way up and a load on the engine, making that governor respond by moving the fuel rack as far over as it can go uh, to get more fuel into the engine. So the more fuel you put in there, the hotter that engine is going to get. Uh, now, if you get more air in there, it'll cool it off. That's uh, one of the reasons that you can get a lot more power out of a diesel with a turbocharger, because you get more air in there. Not only do you need more air for that additional combustion for the fuel, but that air also helps cool it off. So what I'm getting at is if you screw with that screw, not so much the timing. If you did just the timing, you really don't have anything to worry about, but you're not going to reap the benefits or the full benefits. You're going to reap some benefits. Um, and I will talk about that at the end of this video. Uh, but you're going to get much more of a benefit if you also give the tractor a bit more fuel. But if you're not measuring your exhaust gas temperature, you don't know if you've given it too much fuel. And the pistons in these things, pretty sure they're aluminum. Aluminum melts at like 1,200 degrees or around there anyway. So if your temperature is getting too hot, you're going to burn a hole in the piston. That is a real thing. Don't do that. Don't be stupid. Um, this was 20 bucks. If you happen to have a pro breeder already, like for 20 bucks, you could, you know, get the, the temperature of your exhaust gas. So <sighs> I know a lot of talking, but it's important. I'm going to pull this muffler off. We're going to drill a hole. We're going to tap it for eighth inch NBT. We're going to get this in and we're going to go test. All right, exhaust is off. And uh, this, this tractor is set up really nice to add one of these uh, because we don't have to modify the actual uh, manifold. I'm sure this muffler is not cheap, but I mean, this is just a piece of regular pipe. It's not cast. It's just welded on there. So um, I think I'm actually going to leave this in here. But if for some reason it causes an issue, I can plug this up or I can just simply weld a piece over this, grind it back down and, and paint it. This is, the point I'm getting at is this is easy to work on. I would not want to mess with that exhaust manifold yet we are right above it so i'm gonna drill this tap it and get this in place oh i guess i should talk a little bit about uh that in case you're not familiar with the process so i just went ahead and picked up an eighth inch npt tap i might have one in my boxes somewhere but uh i don't i can't think of the last time i used an npt tap so i just picked up a new one um, and for a tap you always drill a, a like a size smaller than the tap itself. And this one, super convenient, this Bosch one. Um, I'll link all this stuff below, down in the description, by the way. Uh, this one tells you even what drill bit to use right on the tap. Look at that. 11 32nd drill. And this is a 1 8 27 uh, NPT pipe. 1 8 is the, the trade size of the pipe. This is far larger than 1 8. It's just that is the size thread for a 1 8 inch pipe. Um, threaded on the outside um, and dash 27 is I believe the dash 27 is 27 threads per inch it's TPI threads per inch so let me find an 11 30 second drill I'm gonna um, center punch that drill that tap it put that guy in I'll bring you back 
Hey, I just unthreaded this nut here on the back, and uh, I thought I'd show you this quick. This is, I've not used one of these before, so I didn't realize this. This actually, this part here um, just slides on this long piece, um, and then there's a little compression sleeve there. So you can, I kind of thought I was stuck with the depth of the probe. The reality is um, this guy slides on here, so I can pull this all the way off, thread this into the hole, and slide this guy in and tighten this nut down so that the probe, the center of the probe is roughly centered in the pipe. Just sharing that because it wasn't, it's hard to tell if this was machined as one piece looking at it, uh, but that does come undone. Um, and then you can put this piece into the pipe and slip the actual probe in and tighten the nut down on the, uh, the little uh, compression sleeve there. All right, I've got this drilled and tapped. I just want to show you, I've got, just that much of that part sticking through the pipe. It's a pretty thick pipe. Uh, it's a thick wall pipe, so it's not like a, a thin pipe that's just gonna uh, flex and, and give way. Um, I could have gone further. As you can see, I got a good amount of thread left there, but I didn't want to block off any more of the exhaust than necessary. So when you are tapping the hole, uh, don't just bottom that tap out. I went maybe a third of the way on the tap, backed it out, um, checked the hole. I wanted to go a little bit deeper so put it back in, went maybe, I don't know, maybe just past a third on the tap, maybe close to the halfway point, and then backed out, tried this piece again, tightened it up, and it's sitting right where I want. So, you know, just don't, don't bottom that thing out. And you can see now that I'm dropping the probe in, hard to get an angle here, this is in the way, but I'm targeting, wow, well, okay, there we go. I'm targeting the probe being right in the center of the pipe when I tighten that nut up. All right, I'm all tightened up. That's what it should look like when you're done. And uh, I'm gonna go put this back on. All right, all done. That was legitimately one of the easiest parts of this entire project. If you are concerned that, you know, maybe you don't wanna go to the trouble of doing this, uh, as in adding the exhaust gas temperature sensor, yeah, just do it, it's cake. Uh, this muffler comes right off. Um, the routing for this is super easy. You see there's plenty of room there. Um, I came down. I chased this bundle here with some zip ties right through the firewall. This rubber thing has a huge slit in it. Through, zip tied twice there, and then the cable is just loose up here. I'm going to plug it into the uh, K-type thermocouple reader while I am driving um, so I can get a look at the temps. And uh, I'm really curious to see how this compares to what I was reading with the infrared gun. My heart is going to sink if uh, I find out that actually I was running this thing a lot hotter than I thought. I don't think that's the case, but let's find out. So this thing turned out to be pretty useless. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I started climbing up the hill that I climbed the other day and I quickly went over a thousand degrees here and actually got to about 1100 um, before I let off the, the gas. Uh, what it would have peaked out at, I'm not sure because I didn't want to get into that temperature uh, again. Um, you know, if you do some reading, you'll see that, uh, you know, like, 12, 1300 degrees is, you know, not unreasonable. And as long as you have the cooling to keep up so you're, you don't get heat saturation, you should be okay. That's too high for me. Um, I don't think I was exceeding that. I don't really want to find out. Um, interesting to note, I had no smoke out of the exhaust uh, with where I had the screw set. So if you're rolling around with visible smoke coming out of your pipe, um, and I'm not talking about like, you know, at night, if you're holding a flashlight up to it, you're always going to see some smoke with a, with a diesel, but no visible smoke coming out of my exhaust, even bogged. Um, and I was still over the temperature that I'd like to be at. So you can't tune, uh, by smoke level and power, uh, alone. I backed the screw off a little bit, tried going up the hill again, and I could not get it over 1100 degrees. It was hanging out at like 1050, 10, 1050 to 1070 most of the time. 
finally got it to bump just a hair over 1100 and I do have a noticeable decrease in horsepower at that fuel setting. So I'm probably gonna fool around with it a little bit more here, but bottom line, can't trust this. Don't tune just by the smoke level. You've gotta tune by the exhaust gas temperature. I'm super happy that I dug up this uh, this probe reader and sprung for the 20 bucks for the, the, uh, the probe. 100% worth it. I'm gonna keep tuning, I'm gonna let you know where I land. Um, I've kind of, I need to do a little bit more research and some thinking about where I wanna land for the maximum safe temperature for this thing to run. Again, this is not the temperature that you're running just rolling around doing general loader work, um, you know, or even using the PTO for, you know, lighter duty work. This is a worst case. You are bogging the engine nonstop for three, five, 10, 15, maybe even 30 minutes, like worst case scenario. That's what I'm tuning for. Um, I might go up a little bit. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll target, you know, just keeping it under 1200 in that absolute worst case condition because for anything else this thing does not go over I don't know maybe six seven hundred degrees um, maybe 800 at medium load so I'll fiddle with it some more I'll bring it back and let you know where I land oh by the way I don't necessarily think that the temperature from this is wrong the problem is it doesn't respond fast enough um, ultimately when I let this thing sit here and just idle I was seeing basically the same temperature on the infrared gun as I was um, on that probe. The issue is that pipe just takes too long to come up to temperature. The, the exhaust gases, uh, they get hot fast, like seconds. Um, you know, if I go from just sort of an idling, you know, engine warmed up, but idling to, you know, on the power fast, I can go from, you know, two, 300 degrees up to a thousand in the blink of an eye. You can't read the pipe on the outside. I don't care whether you're doing it with infrared, you're, you're strapping a, you know, something on there. You simply just can't read the exhaust gas temperature that way. Anybody that tells you otherwise is full of it. It takes that pipe too long to respond. Ultimately, that pipe is going to settle out at the same temperature or close to the same temperature as your exhaust gas, but you don't have that long. You'll blow your engine up before you actually get a valid reading off of that pipe.
Okay, it's been another couple of days. I've done a lot more reading, done a lot of thinking. Um, I had basically, once I had the actual um, exhaust gas temp probe in there, um, I was finding that even when I had the screw backed, you know, pretty far out to where, you know, there was no smoke at any point in time ever, you know, not even when you, you know, throttle up, uh, the temperatures were still a bit higher than I was expecting. I think I was for tuning this for the absolute worst case scenario where you're just beating the snot out of it for five minutes straight, uh, I think a thousand degrees is probably way too conservative. <clears throat> um, it may have been set up that way from the factory. Unfortunately, again, I don't know because I lost the setting of the screw. I really wish um, I had started this project by putting the exhaust gas temperature probe in um, getting a setting or getting a reading in bone stock condition, getting a reading after adjusting the timing, and then getting a reading after messing with the fuel. Unfortunately, that is a, you know, just a magic wand scenario that does not exist. Um, uh, I took this out for, uh, the first time I took this out for a ride after I had basically tuned it for no smoke, which is, you know, what the consensus is on the, uh, the internet. Um, I was seeing my temps rising, you know, quickly up into the 1100s, kind of panicked, backed the screw off a bit more, um, you know, and I was able to get the screw to where I could keep it under a thousand. But again, this is a worst case scenario situation where I've got the, uh, the RPMs at 2700 and I'm going up a five minute long steep hill where I'm able to have this thing on 100% load the entire time. I was pretty upset because I had been using this uh, to try and confirm that my temperature wasn't too high. Just reading the uh, the pipe coming right off the header uh, like that. And this does not give you... By the way, I also have a, a, a nice uh, FLIR um, thermal uh, camera. And the reason I'm using this and not that is because I checked the, uh, the header temperature with both this and that. And they were within uh, two, three degrees of each other across a several hundred degree temperature range. So it's not that this is not accurate. This is just a cheap Chinese. I mean, this, this was like 40 bucks. It's not that this isn't accurate. The problem is you can't read your exhaust gas temperature looking at the, uh, the, the manifold or your up pipe um, coming off the manifold. I really wanted to find out just how bad, um, you know, I kind of might have screwed up by having, by running it up that hill twice, maybe even three times, at the fuel setting that I had it, trying to read with this. I was seeing, uh, I believe, like mid 900s, maybe, maybe just popped over a thousand degrees once on the, the exhaust temperature. And that was at the top of the hill, the very top of the hill where the, the header and the exhaust, that up pipe, had the longest chance to come up to temperature. So I know based on my exhaust gas temperature reading with the actual probe, with that guy that at the top of the hill, I could hit uh, high 1100s. Um, I saw it once, once in several runs, poked just above uh, 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that is definitely hotter that I would wanna run this tractor all the time. But keep in mind, that is the worst case scenario. That's 2700 RPMs, keeping the throttle where I was seeing the EGTs go the highest. So, and it was actually, it's less bog than you think. Just a little bit of bog is where you're getting max power and max EGTs. If you bog further, I found, at least on this, this motor, the temperature actually goes down. Um, you can see it and it, it happens fast. That's the nice thing about having the actual EGT probe and a K-type reader. You see the changes immediately, like the tiniest little bit of change on the, the, uh, the pedal pressure. Uh, on the HST, um, either too much bog or, or uh, not enough bog, the temperature is affected immediately, like, you know, a second. So I went out, I ran it again, and I used this to see what my temperature was. Because I had backed the screw off twice after seeing the temps go over 1100, and then I've adjusted it forward once uh, a little bit uh, to get back pretty much 90% of the performance increase that I saw. Um, and still hoping to keep the temps low. So I just went up that hill. I didn't record, it's just too much going on. Me, I'm, I'm on a public road. Uh, it's, you know, low traffic. I didn't see a, a car the whole time, but low traffic road, 
but I'm on a public road. I'm trying to read the, trying to read that, trying to keep in my lane and use this at the same time. It's just not possible to record. But long story short, at the top of that hill, when I was reading high 1100s on the EGT probe, and once popping to 12, like 1202 degrees before it popped down into back 1180s. Like I really, I tried my best to feather the, the, the pedal to keep the bog at just the right spot to keep raising the temp. Couldn't get it to stay at 1200. It just popped there once. At the top of the hill, this was reading mid to high 900s. Pretty much the same reading I was seeing before. So uh, I've stopped panicking. Um, I'll go back to... You probably could tune your motor just by adjusting that screw until you don't see smoke, but you're going to be a little high. So maybe tune till you start to see some smoke and then come back a quarter turn. I don't know. I would strongly recommend just doing the, uh, the EGT probe. But my guess is since I couldn't get quite as high as I saw before, that my actual temps were probably mid-12s, maybe, maybe poking into 1300. Um, all the stuff I've read online says you can run 12, 1300 degrees all day. Uh, you know, I don't, obviously it's, it's not that high stock. Uh, it's not that I don't believe that. I think if you have the cooling capacity and you don't ultimately get heat soak, which is just your cooling system not being able to keep up, it's probably okay. But I want this thing to last forever. I just want the power that it was designed to have. So I'm not comfortable running those, those temps. I would like to see under 1,000 in normal operating conditions and not exceeding 1200, even when I'm beating the tar out of it for five minutes straight, that worst case scenario. Um, so yeah, I, I'm happy with where it's at now. I'm gonna put the hood back on because I figured that probably is gonna affect the cooling ability of this somewhat. And I'm gonna run that hill one more time with the hood on and just make sure that my temps stay at that under 1200 degrees on that worst case scenario. Um, and by the way, you know, that worst case scenario on your tractor, it's probably not doing what you think you're, you're, uh, you're, you're doing. Uh, I found for, for me, that worst case scenario is pretty much just trying to run as fast as I can on the road. So like if you're running down the road, maybe to get a log or to transport something, that's when you're probably seeing the highest EGTs. Even when you're not bogging the motor that much, it's just that constant, constant, you know, you're feathering that pedal, you know, trying to, to not bog the motor too much, but go as fast as you can. That's what'll get you there. So if you wanna keep it under control, and now I'm probably gonna leave this EGT probe here plugged in for a while, just so I get kind of used to how the tractor responds um, you know, to, to what you're doing. Uh, you wanna drop your temps by a couple hundred degrees. All you gotta do is just not run the motor wound all the way out. Um, I found if I set the RPMs at like 2400, 2500, uh, my EGTs were, you know, a thousand or under. And that's where this thing's gonna get used. It's not, you know, the guys don't get the wrong impression here. I'm not tuning this tractor, you know, to run it rung out um, with, you know, max pedal all the time. Uh, what I'm trying to do again is make sure that in that worst case scenario, I'm safe. When I ran this thing at 24, 2500 RPMs, didn't matter what I did with the pedal, didn't matter what gear I was in, didn't matter if I was on a hill, flat, the EGTs were well within the safe range. Now, they might not be if I had that fuel screw further out. You know, maybe with some smoke coming out of here, even at that lower RPM, I'd probably still be at a temp that was way too high. So, you know, put the EGT probe in. This was not, none of this work was hard to do. Uh, the hardest thing to do was to pull one of the shims out of the injection pump because there's just so much you have to disassemble to get there. Uh, and the second hardest thing, probably getting the cover off of that fuel screw. Uh, I would just suggest if you're good with a Dremel, just start with a Dremel. I don't know how else you'd get that thing off. Um, maybe a nut splitter might help. I don't have one. That's a, that's a thought. Uh, and then the easiest thing to do, the easiest part of this entire project was putting that EGT probe in. I would start there. I, I wish, again, I wish I started there. Um, I'd love to hear what the temps were for someone on a stock L2501. Same thing, um, ringing it out, max max power, you know, for five minutes straight. How high can you get your EGTs? I'd love to know. 
I would love to know because I'm, I swear at stock settings before I did anything to this tractor, I would actually see a little bit of smoke under heavy load. And I've got it to the point now where there's no smoke. I'm not seeing anything at all. Um, I'm not seeing anything at all when it bogs. I'm not seeing anything at all when I throttle up. There's never any smoke, which is great. Um, if you know, I, I'm, I'm super happy. I'm, I'm calling this done once I get the hood on and run it one more time. If the end result is I have, you know, 10 to 15 more horsepower, that's probably a stretch. Let's say 10 more horsepower, um, maybe 10 to 12, 10 to 12 more horsepower and less smoke under load to win. All right, guys, thanks for listening to me drone on. I, I've been talking so much about this and sharing so much information because there's hardly anything out there. Um, I found the best I could find was just numerous threads talking about, you know, how to tune that screw. And I did find maybe two threads where people were actually measuring the EGTs. Um, and it seems like their results are, you know, similar to, you know, to mine. So love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Um, I'm feeling really good about this. Would I recommend this? Uh, yeah, I think I would. But again, EGT probe first and just keep taking readings uh, the, whole, the whole time as you do each step. And if you do that, please comment below. I'd love to hear what your results were. Thanks, guys. So I just finished editing part two, uh, the video that you guys just watched. And there's a couple extra things I wanted to say. First of all, thank you so much for all your thoughts and comments on part one. Really appreciate all the questions, really appreciate all the discussion. Um, caught up with a couple of you guys on Facebook and Reddit as well. Um, I threw out some numbers. I think 10 to 12 horsepower is you know where I thought I might be in the video. Uh, I ran the numbers and I, I'd like to come back and be a bit more conservative. I, I think realistically, I'm probably seeing about a 23% increase in overall horsepower and about an 18% increase in horsepower uh, at the rated RPM for PTO. So what does that mean? Well, I would say that I'm sitting somewhere between 31 and 33 horsepower overall, and somewhere between 21 and 24 at the PTO. Um, I think you could get all of the horsepower that the, the older direct injection variant of this motor has if you were to get all the way there from a timing perspective. I only got about half the way there from a timing perspective, just due to the way that the shims were set up in my tractor. I could have removed the second shim and just done some sealant, as a couple of you guys mentioned. The sealant is still going to have some thickness. I'm not sure how much. I'm not even sure how to go about measuring that without kind of trying to do it on a block with an injection pump tightened to the correct torque and like an indicator. So comment below if you've got any additional thoughts there. But I I'm still really happy with those gains. And... You know, I think particularly for the guys out there, I know I saw at least two people mentioned in the comments, you know, how smoky their original motors are. And I mentioned that in the, the, the intro to the first video too. Keep in mind, there's a range on these motors, you know, from a timing perspective. And I think the people that have the smokiest, dirtiest motors have, you know, the most retarded motors from a timing perspective, just the way they ship from the factory. Because remember, it's a range. So, you know, your, your neighbor with the same L2501 might be looking at, you know, one and a half degrees, you know, advanced timing versus yours straight from the factory just due to that acceptable range. So I think that's why some of these machines are just so darn smoky. That is probably the biggest gain um, that I would say I have from doing this work is my machine is really not smoky at all anymore. Um, I don't notice it running machine for extended period of times like I used to. Um, I, I, I think at night I, I can still spot some smoke with a, with a flashlight coming out of the exhaust, but it's not like what it used to be. And it is, it feels so much more powerful. It feels, you know, from a, you know, called a butt dyno perspective, every bit of 10 to 12 horsepower, but the math tells me it's probably closer to about half that. Um, so probably, you know, maybe six horsepower uh, overall you know, total gain. And, you know, like I said, uh, four to five at the, at the PTO. I also wanted to throw an offer out to you guys. Um, you know, I mentioned in this video that I really wished the first thing that I had done was install that EGT probe and get an exhaust gas temperature reading going up that hill under the same type of load conditions. So, you know, RPMs maxed, you know, feathering the pedal, just trying to get it as, you know, hot as I can um, you know, with the, with the stock settings. 
Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that because I didn't install the probe until after the fact, but um, throw the software out there. I don't know if there's anybody watching this video that happens to be reasonably close to me. I am in the Lehigh Valley, so Northeast Pennsylvania. But if you are, if you want to bring your machine out to my location, I will pay for and I will install an EGT probe for you. And we can run your tractor on the same hill um, and see what the temps are. I'd be happy to go ahead and adjust your, your RPMs as well so we can run it at the same RPM if you'd like. Um, but hit me up, send me a comment below or send me a private message. Um, reach out and uh, I, can, I can reach out to you and we can, we can work that out. I would love to do that. Um, as always, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, you know, thank you for, again, all your, your comments and, and likes in the previous video. Um, please comment below if there's anything you think I missed or there's anything else that you would like to see. And um, yeah, if you haven't already subscribed, uh, please do. I've got a couple of the videos coming out for this tractor in the next couple of weeks. I designed and built a snowblower rotation kit for the Land Pride uh, blower I run on the back. That's going to be coming out soon. And I still have videos coming out on another D1703 that I picked up uh, used for basically scrap value. Uh, so we'll get into that as well. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care and have a happy holidays.